On this Make It Once video, Swedes did some great things in 1969, and they're still doing great things. It's another beautiful February day in California. It's probably 70 degrees right now, uh, but I wanted to get in front of the camera to show off a little gift I got myself uh, for Christmas and the shirt that my wife got me for Christmas. And uh, give you guys an update on uh, what's going on. As you can see, Marty's on the ground. I drove it around and I think I ran out of gas. So uh, that was kind of fun. I didn't film any of it because I was just kind of getting my bearings with, with it, but I'm gonna show you what's going on and where I'm gonna go from here. One of the things that I did on the car uh, was I worked on the seat belt and uh, I installed one. So as you can see, this is upside down, but uh, let's take a look at this. So let's take a look. So, you know, it pops right in there. Pops right in there. There, think I got it. Um, yeah, perfect, perfect fit. This was uh, a couple hours worth of work, and uh, if, you know, for a slim man like myself, uh, this is gonna be just right. <laughs> Actually, in all seriousness, um, in all seriousness, uh, hopefully you could see that I can't move right now. Um, it's maxed out and the reason being is that this seat belt, oh I think I pulled a muscle, uh, is actually for a two-point belt and I didn't quite realize that it wasn't long enough so um, yeah so I gotta redo that and fortunately um, you can get parts from Sweden faster than you can get them for Virginia so I'm gonna unbox that and one of these days I'll have new seat belts in. Just so you believe me, uh, maybe you can read that. This indeed came from Sweden and I ordered it three days ago. The reason why I ordered it from Sweden is because it was cheaper. This. Look at that packaging as well. I'm just amazed. Um, so the seat belt, generic seat belts from Sweden or in Europe are much higher quality than the junk that you get in California. Um, so even shipping it quickly from Sweden was cheaper and faster than getting a part from LA, which is not that far from where I am. So these are three point seat belts instead of two points and it has this extra part and I think it's an extra, the belt itself is an extra uh, foot or two longer. Um, and so uh, I'll do the same method to remove the clasp and put on the old style clasp. I don't really want to install this type. Um, it already has kind of the cool already original one. I just wanted to change the belt. Um, so I won't show you any of that because I already have some of that and uh, I'll reinstall them at some point and have some nice belts. An often overlooked part of prepping for, you know, taking the car out for a drive are the seat belts. Uh, in this car, they seem to be original and I could use this to drive around and I think legally in California that would probably suffice. It just requires a seat belt. Uh, but, you know, even a 25 mile an hour crash my head going into the the steering wheel is not going to feel great. So uh, I'd rather just kind of get get this settled first. That way I don't have to think about it again, at least for the driver.
So in my time lapse, what I showed you was actually putting in the reel at the bottom and putting in the other end on the pillar. So just two points. So that would have actually worked. But the problem was the belt was getting twisted inside the reel because it was pulling it at an angle this way. Uh, Volvo had actually put the third bolt hole down there. Uh, so I kind of did it hoping that it was long enough. And so here's the three point system, but it just didn't work. It's not long enough as you saw. So I bought them to put them in the back of the Amazon so I could have my kids ride around. So I was going to mount them in the trunk and have a two point coming around like that. But never got around to it. Ho I was hoping to repurpose them here. It just didn't work. wasn't long enough. So I'm um, going to pull all that out and put the other longer ones in. Since you've been following me on Instagram, you know what this is all about. Uh, actually, if you're not following me on Instagram, um, I'm going to put a link here. Try to. Follow me on Instagram and you'll get some of these smaller things. Um, it took me quite a while to finally dig out the second part of it, um, but I did it and I was super stoked I didn't have to find new calipers. That would have been mind-numbing to have to lose a caliper just because of a little bleeder screw, but didn't film any of it because it just involved me cussing a lot. But um, yeah, if you want to see a couple of the pictures, then go to Instagram. So one reason why I drained the tank all the way to empty was because I had noticed that this drain plug is just a bolt, all rusty with some Teflon tape on it. And so I wanted the fuel out so that I can put a real plug in it. But now that I've uh, realized that it's actually uh, MPT, which is a tapered thread, and it's supposed to seal based on the threads themselves, deforming i'm not sure i want to pull this out because i may not be able to plug it up again at least not correctly and i would have to use some more sealant so i'm going to hold off on that for the moment um, but I, what i did want to do is stick a camera down into the tank and kind of see the condition see if there's a lot of rust uh, from the outside i don't think there's going to be a big problem but i did want to double check uh, in case there's some holes developing and i need to you know seal it from the inside out when I went for my drive to burn off the rest of the fuel, my muffler patch blew out, so I was like super loud. And I was just going around the same lap that I went on the first ride, uh, and on the second lap I ran out of gas and just coasted right up to the driveway. So it was kind of funny that I just ended up stopping right right in front of my house. Uh, the other thing, I was, I was actually really surprised that I didn't go very far. Uh, it was only just about under a mile. So I must have used a ton of fuel when the, the fuel pump went out and all the idling and just kind of checking the engine. So uh, with the two gallons that I put in originally, uh, didn't go very far at all. When I got back, I looked the car over and there was a, an oil leak here, probably the rear main seal. The engine's been moving around. It's old. Those things happen. The transmission, I've never driven a BW35, but it was terrible. Barely clunked along. I mean, it drove, but... Uh, the other thing that I noticed is that the transmission fluid was pretty much gone. So that transmission is just burning it up or eating it up or maybe it never had enough. The other thing is I think there was a lot of air trapped in the radiator because I'm still adding it, coolant in. Didn't seem like it was burning it off and it's not leaking anywhere. So I think I'm just going to keep topping it off until it stops. So one last thing, since most of you guys are Amazon fans and not 140 fans, there is one more little thing that, you know, I was working on on the Amazon. It's been running okay. So I did notice, and maybe you guys did too, when I was under here working on the clutch hydraulics, uh, Newton here is missing the uh, this cast aluminum inspection part. Uh, I was able to find it real cheap, shipped in from the East Coast somewhere. Just a matter of finding the correct bolts that go into the block near the oil pan and into the bell housing. I don't really know what that is. Uh, so I might be able to do it without lifting the car. That would be nice, but. Uh, so I gotta head down to the hardware store and kind of figure out what the threads are and put that in place. So uh, that is my update for today on both the Amazon and the 142.